So hi guys, and welcome back. Uh, this is part two of the Barn Owls, and I uh, hope you enjoyed part one. So today I'm gonna to be going into the setup, uh, the hide. Um, I might go into a, a bit of basics about natural materials, but what I'm gonna to do today is I've set up a, my old hide in the field as well, dependent on the wind direction. So I could, I've got a choice of two sites really. Um, and I'm also going to do some stuff in my ghillie suit as well, so I'm, I can then be a bit more uh, manoeuvrable um, around, around the field. Um, but today I'm going to relocate the, the hide um, to another field, because the farmer wants to bring some of the cows in here to eat some of the grass, so they might absolutely trash it. So uh, I've got to move that today. And just go into the site that I've chosen really for this evening's photography because of the wind. It's over a fence in a nice little um, corner, which would be really, really good. Uh, to keep myself out of the weather um, because it's going to be windy and it might be a little bit showery today. So, uh, and we'll go through that then. So here we have my old hide, which I put in here the last couple of days. And this has been a really, really good viewpoint here, tucked down in the corner, right at the bottom of the hill here. Um, and obviously the owl generally comes in at the top corner, heads across the top of the field where those trees are, along the field margin, and it comes all the way down this track here. And there's a fence post just there that it seems to sit on quite frequently. And last night I was here in the hide and it was hunting sort of midpoint of the field. Didn't come down to this corner, which it generally usually does. Um, it may have spotted the hide, maybe it's relatively new and it's not been too happy, but it's been really good in here. And this is another great position as well, even though the sunlight is over this side, sets in the west, it goes quite low and it, it sets quite a nice uh, golden glow across the field. So another really good spot. So I've got this location here and I've got one over in the corner there. So I've got the best of both worlds really. And now I'm gonna relocate the hide into the next field. So actually in the hide now, I've just relocated it to the next field, which is slightly smaller. I think probably about kind of four acres maybe and um, there's one of my posts just there a bit too close for that one for the barn owl to land on but um, just tucked it in the corner near this hedge line because there's a nice little field margin along here and you get fox deer and you get the uh, the owls coming up and down here so I'm going to tuck the hide away here for a bit shut the gate so then my uh, hide doesn't get absolutely trashed by the uh, cattle and uh, maybe relocate it back once the farmer's um, move the cattle on but uh, it's still a good little spot here and the barn owl it does hunt in this field as well so um, you know it's always a good chance that when the wind's blowing that much harder from the west then there's a bit more shelter in here and the barn owl will hopefully hunt along plus there's the, the gate post as well there so uh, that's the hide in the second field and I'm going to head back now get set up so I've got here now it's about just after three so a really, really good time to get set up, get your gear ready, get your tripod out, uh, just check the area over really, and um, get yourself set up for hopeful um, bar now activity for, a, for an hour or so, just before it gets dark. So this is really, really straightforward, really, really simple. I've got a net here, and I just push the net all the way across here, just connecting to that old ratty blackthorn there, covers this area off completely, hook it up the top there on a little bit of a tree, and then that whole area then is covered. The netting's pretty good because I can actually see quite, quite well through it. So it does hide me and then provides just that little bit more cover. Um, I mean, the barn owl, to be honest, you know, I've, I've been in the field and the barn owl's been in here hunting. Um, and uh, it, you know, I don't think it's spotted me, but it's, I, I think it's fairly tolerable. But I think just having this extra bit of Netting here and this little bit of camouflage does really sort of help you out quite a bit, especially for other bird species like um, buzzard and, and kestrel, which are quite shy. So uh, a really good idea. And I'm going to get that set up now, get the, uh, get the tripod in position, get the lens set up, and then we'll go through some of the basic settings. I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful afternoon. It's a bit of a wind, but um, really, really nice. Apologies for all the noise there. That's the air station nearby. Lots of activity going on. Thank you. 
So when setting up then, one thing you want to make sure is you get a nice stable base for your tripod. Camera's nice and stable, you've got a good field of view here. I've positioned my camera, camera slightly forward, um, just because to the left of me there, there's quite a lot of foliage kicking out and the bar now likes a particular spot up to the left here. So then I can just come forward, train in, and then hopefully capture some shots of it coming across. But you want your tripod nice and stable. Make sure you use the spirit level in the middle. Get the little bubble in the middle so it's nice and level. So when you're panning and stuff like that, you've not got any wonky, um, wonky angles on, your, uh, on the screen. Um, it saves you having to recorrect that later on. But uh, so get it ready. Make sure that your, um, all your buttons are positioned correctly. The camouflage is all sorted got everything ready to go, spare batteries, that sort of stuff. And then literally as that light starts to fail, you're in a great position then just to uh, hopefully capture that all important shot. So all set up, all good to go. Um, got about an hour now till possibly the owl will, sh will show up, but uh, there's always a chance of something else popping in. Um, but at the moment, just a lot of crows really. Um, so the settings I'm using really, so this afternoon, light's pretty good at the moment. If I look at the light levels, so yeah, I mean, I'm getting two thousandths of a second at ISO 320. So, you know, amazing light at the moment. It really is quite nice, not too harsh. But as that light fails, it does get a little bit difficult and I don't really like to push it too much. Um, so I'm getting about on sunset and I can still probably get away with um, you know, some images at really, really high ISO. It's like 25,500. I mean, it's unheard of years ago, but you know, it's not going to be a great image. Even through Topaz, I'm sure it will probably tidy up a little. But So as soon as it gets to a point there where the light pretty much goes on sunset, um, I basically stop doing stills and I just hope for some video then really. And because the light levels have faded an awful lot, I shoot then at 4K at 30. So at 1 and 60th of a second at fully wide open at F4. And I should generally be able to retain an ISO of about 1,000 to 2,000. And that makes, you know, still quite a usable bit of video. Um, very difficult to slow it down in slow-mo because at 30 frames, you can do it through DaVinci Resolve using various project settings, but to be honest, it, it does ruin it a little bit. So, you know, you've you got to go with what you've got and hopefully as the season pushes on and uh, the owls come out earlier hunting for food, the light levels will be better. I'll be able to then shoot primarily stills with just a little bit of video. But uh, best for owls, really, you want to be shooting no lower really than one and five hundredths of a second and usually at wide open because it's obviously usually either early morning it's late in the evening. You want it fully wide open, let much uh, light in as possible and, and, and a fairly fast shutter speed. I'd say one and five inch per second is probably your minimum um, requirement really. I like to maybe do it about eight hundredths, maybe a thousandth of a second, but you are, as soon as you start pushing that up, then obviously your ISO jumps right up too. What you can do is use a bit of exposure compensation and you can dial in slightly underexposed image and maybe pull that back a little bit in, uh, in post-processing and that way you know you could retain some detail probably introducing a lot of shadow areas probably losing quite a lot of a detail in the shadow, shadow areas but you know you're still going to retain a bit of an image and you might just be able to give you that little bit faster shutter speed just to allow you to capture that all-important shot but there's some of my basic tips really for owl photography um, especially in low light situations so just remember one five hundredths of a second fully wide open at f4 and if you can shoot higher up shut, shut, you know your shutter speed brilliant um, but uh, obviously as soon as you start introducing too much iso then you know it starts to ruin your image so then i just flip over to do some video and um, you know I, I usually get away with 4k at 30 till it gets actually quite dark so um, but that's some of my basic settings there <laughs> Talking about focus points for, for owl photography, generally single spot is great, um, but I use single spot with four surround, especially as the light fails. Barn owls stick out quite well, gets quite, um, quite dark. We've got a nice white owl there quartering amongst the brown grasses and stuff like that. It really does show up, but I find the, the, the center focus point, four surround, 
really does nail it most of the time and occasionally dependent on where it lands if it lands on one of the posts i've got in front of me i can quickly flip it to single point and then focus it straight onto the uh, the head the eye and then obviously take some nice images that way it's one of the essential items to bring with you on uh, a session with barn owls it's a cup of tea or coffee or whatever floats your boat because just can't live without it when i'm out and something to eat a bit of dunking something along those lines just to keep morale up when things are a bit uh, a bit slow but uh, the light's starting to fail now so i'm hoping maybe we'll see an owl turn up because i think it's supposed to be raining tomorrow and tonight so hopefully it'll come out and hunt before the rain comes in so i've just checked the trail camera and uh smashing i have some footage it's literally about three or four seconds and the barn owl comes in you don't see it really land like that comes in sits on the post kind of looks at the camera and then flies off um, but i got some footage it worked you know that's the post that it likes to go on literally about eight foot from where i'm sitting and uh yeah so that footage should be playing on the screen now yeah i told you it was quick it's not a lot to it but uh great to see though nice that um was probably my best camera i've got and the footage wasn't too bad really I'm hoping to get up a bit more. I've put a couple more dotted around, so uh, uh, hoping to get a bit more success there, see if we can pick some owls or, or some other bird species up. So going through here then, I've obviously put the scrim net up, as I said before. It's just something's better than nothing. You know, you don't need a scrim net necessarily. I've just covered my camera there with a nice bit of uh, camouflage netting. You could use some of that. You could just position yourself further up in amongst the tree line just with a bit of natural foliage, holly, evergreen stuff, you know, just to, con just to conceal yourself that little bit more, or use a ghillie suit, or, you know, you can use other sites of camouflage, use hides that I've used. There's loads of things you can do, and you can make hides out of natural materials, provided you get permission. You know, some old branches, make a, a lean-to, you know, get a little seat, just sit in there, job done. Natural materials, materials really, really great to use, but there's lots of things you can do. So whilst I'm doing this, I am on using this position, using the hide, and it's all dependent on wind direction and what the weather's like. And also I aim to use my ghillie suit as well to be a bit more mobile, especially when the owl's hunting in all these fields. I can then just move along the, uh, move along the hedge line and, and do a bit more um, up close and personal stuff rather than being restricted um, sitting obviously in this position where I'm not really able to get mobile, not with the external screen, you got microphone, your vlogging kit. You know, sometimes it is nice to have that camera with you being that little bit more mobile with a lighter outfit you know and you can tuck yourself up into the corner watch the owl coming across you know it, it will go around its regular haunts so you know put yourself in a great position there and you get some really really good shots so aim not just sticking to one spot but then varying it a little bit well guys apologies for the uh, Merlin helicopter making an absolute racket behind me uh, there's not much I can do about that Wind's going that this direction and it's blowing all the noise this way, but uh, I'm kind of used to it. Birds are quite used to it, but it's a bit distracting for you guys, I expect, but uh, it's not a great deal I can do about that. Um, thanks very much for a lot of comments, especially in, in part one um, on wrecking a site. You know, it's by the sounds of it, and there's an awful lot of you out there that are uh, looking into barn owls at the moment. And um, I'm hoping you all get some success. You know, it's an absolutely magical bird um you know to photograph for me as you're already aware most of you that is my favorite bird and um it is actually up there in number one in the uk a favorite bird species closely followed by the robin so you know it, it's an amazing bird you know once you, once you start you probably won't stop it will become an obsession um, and i'm really interested to see how you guys get on with how you capture your images settings you use if you're doing any video what sort of video you're using are you using external screen camera screen using manual autofocus um, and also, you know, share some pictures as well. I'd love to see some of your shots that I'd like to include maybe in one of my vlogs as well at the end. And I'll obviously credit you accordingly at the bottom. But yeah, if you've got anything like that, guys, please feed it back. You know, I love to get feedback, you know, not just about what I've just produced, but also how you guys are getting on. You know, I mean, lots of tips for me as well. You know, every day is a school day. So, you know, all helping each other out in this community really where you know, you give me stuff, I give you stuff, you know, and it kind of all works really. But uh, yeah, just let us know in the comments or contact me through my website, um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, or, or uh, in the comments section below on YouTube.
so I've um, this morning I cleaned all my equipment this morning so the lenses have all been cleaned all the glass is all good to go I've given the uh, the camera a good blow through as well and clean and if you haven't already watched my um, my vlog on how to clean your lenses and camera just uh, just above you there there should be a eye button and uh, that will just be the, the the vlog that I did a while back it's, it's quite basic probably many of you know how to do it but it's something that a lot of people overlook and just leave um, but uh, I certainly like to look after my kit. So uh, if you fancy watching that, give it a look. So I've gone through their basic settings about aperture and shutter, about ISO and some of the basic video settings I use, but also bearing in mind, you need to have quite a fast shutter actuations. Now barn owls aren't rapid like some of the falcons and stuff, but you know, they are quite erratic in their movement sometimes, quartering and then pouncing down and, you know, hovering and stuff like that. So, you know, you want a, a fairly good shutter speed if you can. So I have mine at the moment, depending on how far away the barn owl is. Now, if it's quite a distance away, I'll have it at high frame rate, the maximum I can, which is 14 frames a second or 16 frames a second in mirror lockup, which is so fast, probably too fast to be perfectly honest, but still it allows me then to get that that absolutely key moment in, in that barn owl's movements. But as that barn owl gets closer, depending on wind direction, the shutter is noisy and I've got a silent high frame rate shutter mode on this camera, which isn't really a great deal quieter, but still it, it affords me a little bit more um, quieter, uh, quieter um, shutter going off. So I, I generally select that if it's at close quarters. But that's just another thing to bear in mind really with your, with your aperture and your shutter and obviously what um, what uh, speed rate you've got on your uh, on your camera i mean you know anything over five frames a second really would be ideal but uh, you know having that little bit faster does really help in these situations another really good thing to remember with um with barn owl photography and some of the raptor species is that always it's great to be birds like to hunt into wind so currently the moment the wind's coming from behind me so when the birds are here in front of me, they're looking right at me and hunting into wind. So it's brilliant in that respect for getting some very decent shots, you know, getting some nice quartering shots. If it's the opposite way around, all you're gonna get is a rear end view, which isn't really ideal. Um, it's not always the case, it depends where the, you know, how strong the wind is. Um, and obviously there are some areas where there is no wind and they can shelter and stuff like that it might be slightly different, but, but nine times out of 10 into wind, and you're in a great position where wind's coming behind you, birds are in front, look straight at them and hopefully you'll be able to nail that uh, all important shot. But there's just another a quick tip really that, um, that might help you a little bit. Well guys, that's pretty much it from me for part two. I hope you've enjoyed it. Just went through some basics there really, you know, setting up the, the netting, the hide, ghillie suit, you can, any sort of camouflage material, you can even stand in the corner of a field with a fairly drab jacket on, tripod set up, bold as brass, just there to watch the owl. And you'll probably find that they will come in um, to you quite close. But this owl particularly is quite skittish. So hopefully I'll build up a relationship with this owl and maybe later on I could just sit myself out in a field somewhere and just enjoy the views. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, you know, you've picked up some little tips there and I look forward to seeing you all um, back for part three where I'm hoping to do uh, just a vlog on, on a bit of video and, uh, and some still images, hopefully if I manage to capture some, if it's not too dark. Um, but now I'm just going to sit and enjoy the last half hour, 45 minutes with uh, no camera on. Just enjoy the moments and uh, maybe get some rewarded, rewarded with some, uh, some decent views of the owl. But uh, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. <laughs>